episode three of John's paragliding show. Well, as you can see behind me, uh, some amazing clouds. I'm actually back now from a flight this morning, back home, and I've I've managed to fly uh, with my friend Richard, although I didn't fly with him. Uh, he flew to Benbridge, I flew to Shanklin from Afton. So that's a cross kind of crosswind situation. Afton takes a north to northwest. So today it was northwest on takeoff very light winds and uh, Richard was uh, earlier left earlier than me I went down to the bottom field once and then carried up and had another go and I was able to to get away but um, the main thing I wanted to talk about today was uh, I'm going to show you some clips of, of today's flight and the biggest thing I think to talk about today is is the importance of of trying to maximize lift. Uh, today was definitely flying in sort of convergency air and I think I've heard Greg talking about convergence. When you're in convergence what you tend to find is you do your turn in what you think is going to be the thermal core and as soon as you turn in what you think should be a normal thermal it kind of isn't there. And whenever you have this, it, this is a sign, a sure sign, you're in some sort of convergence. So here the sea breeze was coming in and converging with the northwesterly. And um, so that's one thing. And what Greg says as well is, is, is what I'll repeat here. And that's in that situation, you need to make your, your thermals as tight as you can. You need to really tighten up your turns. So I touched on this yes, uh, last time. And so this is a definite time where you really need to turn tight. It's the same if you're, if you're going up to an inversion and you're reaching an inversion, you need to tighten. You, in this situation, you need to tighten your turn, not widen your turn. So the main thing I want to share from today, and you'll see in the video, um, is that um, basically, that even though there was no, no, hardly any wind on takeoff, um, as I got further down, I got past St. Catherine's and I saw Paddy and some others flying there and then I pushed on and I got a bit of lift um, but not much and so then I got low and I had a low, slowish save it's near Roxall I think and I got a very rough thermal, I had a 50% collapse but I got back up again to about 3,000 feet I didn't quite get to cloud base because I was drifting over the sea I could have stayed with the thermal but I was drifting out over towards Ventnor and, and sort of slightly going out to sea. And I noticed the wind seemed to be picking up and I realized now what happened was the sea breeze was compounding with a northwesterly wind and it was making this strong westerly. And my instrument was telling me, I think it was like 24, maybe 25 kilometers an hour west. And I was thinking crumbs that, that, that there, there shouldn't be that much wind. So it had to be a compounding scenario, compounding sea breeze with the northwest. And even though the clouds looked amazing, I, I couldn't get where I wanted to go because I wanted to push north to get inland and then get around that corner to go on to Bembridge, which is where my friend Richard was enjoying a pint whilst I was there struggling. So I was over Shanklin and I was in a thermal, I was drifting out over the sea and thinking I haven't got many landing options here if I go down because it's cliffs and it's high cliffs and obviously you'll be landing on crowded beaches and the wind was more offshore so you don't want to be landing behind a high cliff. So I realised I've just got to push forward and if I get something great to get me round that corner or I just land and I decided to pick a safe landing field and I found somewhere to land and uh, you'll see from the video but um, one thing I want to say as well is that at the beginning of this flight Richard and I were both waiting on the takeoff and obviously not wanting to go down and we saw a bird and we both took off and I went first flying towards this uh, I think it was a buzzard thermal in front and uh, sure enough a nice thermal but instead of turning in that thermal I made the classic mistake which I'm making again and again in the past and that's I kept flying towards this thermal which was thermaling in front or, or flying straight into in lift 
So I kept going towards the bird and I flew out of the thermal. So then I wasted valuable height turning round and I, I never really got back to where I was. I, I just kind of lost it. And, and I sort of realized again, this is a typical mistake, especially if you're low. If you see a bird and you fly towards a bird, even if he's in lift, if you've, if you've counted over three seconds, one, two, three, the Vario's bleeping, you really need to think about going into a 360 if you're high enough. Because what, what you can easily do is fly out into sync because there could, he could be in a completely different core even though he's going up. So don't just assume, oh, the bird's there so there's going to be lift all the way to him. No, if you're low, you cannot afford to just count on that. So fly your own thermal, don't just rely on birds too much. I mean, yes, they're very useful, but you don't want to fly out of lift. If you've counted three, four seconds and you're still flying towards that bird, time to make the turn. So remember that, that's a key one. Um, you probably know that already. But anyway, enjoy some clips. I've got some clips for you from today's flight. And I have tried to commentate a little bit, but it is obviously windy and I need to get a proper microphone. I don't even know how I'm going to do that because I don't know how I'm going to plug the microphone in to sync with the camera, but uh, if you've got any ideas, please let me know. So uh, enjoy the clips and you'll see me at the end when I'm, after I land, just uh, comment commentating a little bit on the flight. Um, hopefully you'll learn something from some of the things you see. Enjoy it and I'll see you at the end. Thanks for watching. So I'm going to make this my last turn. This is definitely convergence. Woohoo! I'm going to head toward the next cloud. Wow. Fantastic. So pleased I went out for another try. there. 
no castle in there. Hopefully not too much turbulence. Richard made it to Benbridge. I got pinned because ben Benbridge Crab and Lobster Pub is that way. The wind is coming from from there and pretty strong. So the wind was blowing me over to the sea, and I just couldn't penetrate forward. I was really I was stuck basically here in the sand down down there. Just see sand down. So obviously Richard made it over to Benbridge. He did very well but uh, just couldn't make it so I was thinking about landing options and there wasn't a lot of landing in Sandown so I was thinking I really need to push forward because I'm, I'm not going to have anywhere to land and I knew the wind had picked up and it's, it's blowing from basically almost northwest something like that blowing me out to sea so I thought, well, I've, I've got no choice. I've, I've got to fly through those thermals I was getting and, and just land safely. So I landed here. You can feel that wind. I mean, it's really picked up. I guess that sea breeze is compounded. So now I've got to find my way out of here. And uh, hopefully Richard's wife, uh, Susan, will give me a lift. So that was a good flight. I had a big collapse, 50% collapse, uh, and a, a low, lowish save. But it was great fun. And I look forward to putting that on the video. And uh, I had to admit defeat there because I really felt that it was potentially dangerous to just keep drifting out over the water because I had a thermal, I was over Shanklin, and I was drifting out over the sea and thinking, I don't really want to be in this place because. Um, Yes, I could have gone out to sea and then gone sideways, but at the same time, I didn't want to put myself in a place where I couldn't get out, and I didn't really want to land on the beach as an as a option. I could have done, I suppose, but there's lots of cliffs there, and I wouldn't have wanted to land behind a cliff or something. So, yeah, it was, it was a tricky situation. My Skytrax was saying the wind was 24 kilometers an hour, from the west northwest, um, possibly northwest, so probably northwest. So you can see it was just pushing me basically into the corner more and more out to sea. So I think I did the right thing, I uh, played the safe option, I landed in a good field, had plenty of height um, to assess the field. Uh, I'm just thinking, how could I have improved on that? It's hard really, I mean I, I would have needed to be a lot higher to have been confident to drift out and to get up to cloud base and then I wouldn't have minded going out to sea but I just wasn't high enough to feel safe to do that with that wind and I mean my head, my head, uh, my speed into wind was only about max 20 kilometers an hour with bar so I, that's half bar so never mind i think i did the right thing i'm not sure how i could have got out of that one like i say i just if i'd had more height i would have gone for it and then picked something up along the sand down coast um 
But uh, don't forget Richard on his uh, Zeno, he's got a lot more glide. So perhaps he just was able to push into the wind more. I'm going to talk to him when I see him. But anyway, lots of lessons learned. The big collapse. I managed to just let the wing fly. And when it collapsed, I just I tuck my feet in a little bit. Try not to twist and keep my center of gravity in. I let the wing fly and it, to be honest, it just recovered very well, very quickly by itself. So I didn't have to to really worry about it, just got my heart beating a bit because I wasn't expecting that. It was a rough, rough edge of a thermal. So it just shows on these good days, be careful when you get low because that side of the, th the edge of the thermals can be pretty rough. But wow, that was a great flight. Flying in the sea breeze convergence was great. So, wow, I wouldn't have missed that for anything. That was amazing. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Joshua, where's the wind here? It's blowing a gale in uh, Sandown. Well done, Joshua, you made some more.